UFO witness Phil Tyndale has described in detail an experience he'd had as a boy in South Australia in 1980. At that time, he and his brother saw during at least 15 minutes two strange objects flying together and finally engaging a kind of battle in the sky of Adelaide. A third witness also claimed to have seen one of these UFOs actually crash in the area near where the battle was seen. Is it a real story? Section 51 Hi everyone, what's up guys, Dos Geek here again with Section 51. Big thanks as always for your support to Section 51 and welcome to the new viewers. Before starting, let's like and share this new video right now to keep supporting Section 51. And please, let me invite you to watch this new video until the end. I hope you're well and that you're ready. Let's start right now. Today's story is absolutely incredible, if it is true. It is possible that this is one of the most spectacular contemporary UFO events. In fact, in a YouTube video posted in November 2019, Phil Tyndale has described in detail an amazing experience, a UFO encounter he'd had as a boy in South Australia. The mysterious sighting, the Sterling event, which took place at half past 9 p.m. on February the 7th, 1980, began when his brother Rob called out to draw his attention to something very strange in the sky near their home in Aldgate. They were 10 years old, and it was the start of a new school year. They were living in Aldgate on Coromandel Road. Their house was positioned high on the side of a valley that looked towards the Sterling Township. The house was reasonably modern, and the land recently subdivided into allotments of around 6,000 square meters. They had a perfect view of the valley. Towards Sterling, and around one kilometer away, a line of trees followed a gentle ridge forming the end of the valley. When his brother called him, Phil Tyndale jumped out of bed and ran into his brother's room to see what had caught his attention. From the window, looking towards the southeast of Adelaide, they saw a bright yellow object slightly larger than the apparent size of Venus. A yellow object bobbing about above the trees approximately one kilometer away, before a second object emitting a red light also appeared nearby. For the next 15 minutes, the boys watched in amazement as the red object seemed to zoom towards the yellow object then stop and reverse, as if attempting to provoke a reaction. The two objects then began to zoom across the sky in a zigzag pattern as Toph engaged in a duel. A third witness, 21-year-old farm and Daryl Brown, claimed to have seen a yellow object shaped like a speedboat actually crash into some trees near to where he was working. The location perfectly matched where the two brothers had seen the object in the sky. Briefly, my brother and I witnessed a chase between two hostile craft. Um, the chase resulted in one of those craft crashing into a tree and a third party was involved. That third party was able to get a close-up look of, at the craft. Uh, it measured around eight metres long and appeared like a yellow speedboat shape from the underneath. The US Navy has recently come out and acknowledged the existence of UFOs within our, within our atmosphere. Uh, their fighter pilots are involved in pursuing these UFOs. So this has added a certain level of legitimacy to, to people like myself to come out and talk about it. I suppose I'll go into some detail about what my brother and I witnessed. We were quite young at the time. But um, if you haven't heard this story or read the story, then it's probably worth me describing it to you. Well, on this particular night, my brother called out and said, Phil, come and check this out. At the end of the valley, just above the tree line, was a yellow object. He 
it was hovering, wobbling around, then it would resume its hover. And we knew that this was not any ordinary craft, so we were pretty interested. Um, a few minutes later, a red object joined this yellow object, and it was almost had a cartoon-like quality to it. The, the red object zoomed up to the yellow object, um, reversed up, and then zoomed up again, as if the yellow occupants had not actually noticed the presence of it. The yellow object took off, took off um, as fast as a rocket, and the red object followed. So these craft zigzagged across um, our valley back and forth many times in very close pursuit. Sort of like a couple of blowflies, if you've ever watched a couple of blowflies zipping around the sky. They, they, they almost uh, operate as if they're on, on the same brain because the, they, don't, they, they stay such a close, uniform distance apart. Um, it's, it's quite impressive to watch. And these craft performed like that. Every now and again, the yellow object became stuck as if it was um, caught by some invisible force and it would shake back and forth and then it would free itself and the chase would, would continue. The, the sort of movements of these craft were nothing like any uh, conventional aircraft could do. The accelerations were instant, so that's, that'd be from a stationary position, get to a speed instantly and stop, turn, reverse with no change in velocity at all. So the, it was like watching ping pong balls bounce off of a wall. Um, that obviously overcome the barriers of inertia. There appeared to be no inertia to the movements of these craft. Um, we had enough time to run into our parents' room and try to get them out of bed to come and watch this. But uh, they told us to go back to sleep, so they um, perhaps didn't believe us. Uh, eventually, the yellow craft had enough of this chase and took off to our right and disappeared behind them. A hill. Uh, we, that was the end of the event. We didn't see any more chasing and we didn't see any more craft. The, um, we waited probably for an hour afterwards to see if they'd reappear, but they didn't. All up, the sighting lasted maybe 15 minutes in total. Now, two days later, uh, the, in the paper, another chap had reported on the same night at the same time uh, hearing a, a loud crash, he ran out the back of his house, shone the torch into a tree and saw this yellow object wedged some 30 or 40 metres into the upper branches of this tree. He described it as an 8 metre long yellow speedboat shape from the underside. Now the craft had knocked off a branch measuring some 30 centimetres in diameter uh, and had done significant damage to the tree. So it, had a pretty significant impact, but it wasn't destroyed. Um, Daryl, the chap who had witnessed this, called the police and they did turn up, but by the time they turned up, the craft had disappeared. But from my brother's perspective and my own perspective, we knew Daryl was telling the truth because we had witnessed um, the same event on the same night at the same time. And where the craft had disappeared to, from our own vision was where Daryl lived, which was behind that hill. So we knew that the two events or the two sightings were the same event. So I guess my reason for bringing this out to public is that I'm hoping to bring the conversation, to move the conversation forward beyond the believe it or not stage. Most of the public still seem unconvinced that we are actually being visited. And uh, from my own perspective, uh, well, it's, there is no question. These, these craft were so far beyond the human inventory, uh, especially during the 1980s when I think the first handheld calculator only came out in 1972 into Australia. So we were still pretty primitive as far as electronic technology went. And these craft performed like nothing that uh, the human inventory had in its possession. So it leaves uh, very little uh, other explanations except to say that these intelligences behind these craft were non-human and likely extraterrestrial. So the question is, or the questions which I would like 
the conversation to pursue is what are they doing here? You know, these are these are important questions. Uh, are they here to help us, or are they here to protect their own interest in the planet? We this is the level of conversation that we need to get to, and we need to move beyond the believe it or not stage. So this is my reason for posting this YouTube video. There's no payment involved here. There's no reward. I assure you that um, I've tested, I guess, my openness on my friends and family and generally ridicule is about as good as it gets. So there's, there's not a lot of personal um, benefits to doing this. Uh, but I believe that the conversation is very important. What's interesting about this testimony is that Phil is referring to recent UFO encounters officially confirmed by the US Navy. It is now obvious that these recent events are increasingly helping witnesses to talk about their own past experiences. Experiences that they kept secret until today because of fear of reprisals or being made ridiculous. And I hope that many more concrete testimonies like this will emerge in the future. This will help make the subject of UFOs more and more serious with time. This will help to free up the discussion on the topic. Although there are pieces missing in this story, and especially photos or video footage, we have to admit that this testimony is very rich, very convincing, and it seems to be supported by multiple newspaper articles. When telling his story, Phil doesn't seem to hesitate much and describes in detail the scene he observed, which makes this testimony even more disturbing. This suggests that this air battle scene really took place. Moreover, the testimony was studied by several UFO enthusiasts and even debunkers. So, on the basis of those elements, it seems consistent to infer some important points, or at least, some important questions. First, how did disappear the yellow UFO crashed in the tree? Was it secretly recovered by military forces, or maybe by aliens? This remains a mystery. Secondly, Could it be possible that there is a conflict between ET groups and this conflict could complicate the situation of humans on Earth? Maybe we have ignored an important warning that aliens have been telling us for decades. And this warning could appear to be the reason why they are here. Contactees frequently report a message or environmental warning during abduction events. So we could believe this is crucially relevant. And that makes me suddenly think about a very surprising question. Was Greta Thunberg abducted by aliens? <laughs> But let's stay serious. Continuing on these considerations, how might an alien presence implement an agenda for Earth and humanity? The fact that ET conflict exists could give us important insight into the relations between these visitors. It suggests that different ET species or ET groups are living on Earth among us. It could confirm that competing interests or agendas are a likely backdrop to this phenomenon, and self-interest seems part of the ET makeup. Conflict may justify the need for secrecy and may imply codes of conduct or rules that are likely to exist between these ET groups. However, it seems that Earth is very important to these visitors, including the possibility of territorial gain. It may be that these entities are here to help us to some extent Yet, self-interest also seems part of the equation. In these conditions, it's quite sure that any assistance will come with conditions and that we are terribly disadvantaged in determining the true intention of the groups involved. 
we will always lag behind those technologically more advanced beings than we. Our prospects for evolution on Earth may therefore depend on our ability to adapt to this balance of forces, with the help of our own means, our own intelligence, our own openness, and perhaps unknown allies. Who knows? I hope you enjoyed this video. Section 51 is on social networks, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to share it, to subscribe to the channel, and to support Section 51. Thank you. I'll be back really soon. Open your eyes, watch the sky, live long and prosper. <laughs>